that was Kaylee Bustard playing one of my harps. I'm Mervyn Waugh and I've been making these Termenon Alas for some years now. They've proven very popular. I've been selling a lot of them here in Ireland and many of them overseas as well. Um, however, I've decided the time has come when I should uh, hang up the tools and uh, do my best to retire. Now, I'm not saying I'll never make another harp, but uh, I'm definitely not taking any more orders. And this is probably one of the last alas that I will make. Now, the Terminan name uh, is in good hands. I'm passing it on to the next generation. My son, Brian, is making a range of student harps. There's the Learner 26 and the Learner 34. They're aimed at the serious student who wants a, a quality harp, but at an entry level price. They're a bit simpler in construction than the Alla, but uh, I'll let him tell you about them. I'm Brian. I'm taking over somewhat the Termenon uh, harps from my father, Mervyn. Um, I've just been stringing, I'm in the process of stringing this Learner 34 harp. Um, the, the Learner 34 is principally the same string layout, same string spacing, same strings, uh, fluorocarbon strings as the Ella. Um, it's uh, levered with Kamak levers also. The main differences in it are that it's, um, it's a simpler construction in that it's a solid maple harp. Um, it has a straight four post and the soundboard is made from aircraft plywood. Um, it's a, a rectangular um, shaped uh, sound box. Um, it has quite a large, large bass on it. There's a lot of volume from the bottom strings. Um, it's nice and bright in the middle. As well as the Learner 34, I also make uh, a 26 string harp, which um, strangely I call the Learner 26. It's principally the same as the 34, only it has the bottom octave um, isn't there, uh, leaving the top 26 strings. It's um, aimed at children, shorter arms, don't reach as far down the harp and therefore don't reach the bottom strings. It's also particularly favoured by people who are looking for um, a transportable harp, one that will fit easily into luggage compartments perhaps on aircraft and um, that they can take on the bus with them and so on. Some people um, have bought it as far afield as America, um, Shanghai, um, there's, there's har these harps all over the world. Um, and it's it's suited to people that want to have a harp that they can carry around with them. They'll bring it maybe to the pub, um, they'll bring it to a friend's house. Um, again, it's um, of plywood uh, soundboard construction. It's solid maple with fluorocarbon strings, again, levered with Kamak levers. Levers on each of these harps uh, can be fitted in any combination of, of your choice. Some go for CNF, some BCNF, some go fully levered. Um, so I lever the, the harp in any combination that you desire. As well as my Learner 34 and the Learner 26, uh, I also have a harp kit which we've designed. Uh, it's a 26 string harp in a box. The harp itself is computer cut from birch faced plywood. Um, all the pieces will fit perfectly together as it is computer cut. Everything that you need to make the harp is contained in the box, right down to the glue, the screws, the screwdriver, even the sandpaper. The only thing that you will need to finish the harp is whichever finish that you desire, be that paint or lacquer or whichever. Uh, full instructions come with the harp and they're printed, they're inside the box. The instructions also are available on the website and we think the build a harp sounds pretty good. As I say, I've just been putting some strings in this Learner 34 harp. Um, stringing is something that people would often ask me is, you know, how do you tie the, the toggle on the string? Each of the strings has, um, our harps we put a wooden toggle at the back uh, so that it makes nice contact with the, the soundboard. And people often ask, how do you tie the string? 
Uh, it's not particularly difficult, but it's something that people are daunted by because it's a small toggle, a fine string and so on. So I'm going to show you now how I tie a toggle onto a harp. Now for the purposes of this, this the toggles are, are very small and the strings are very thin, so I'm going to use this, which will probably end up a tuning key or one of my other harps, and this piece of wire. Now, it starts out simply as one loop, which is tied in a half knot or a half granny knot or some people I think call it, like that. Toggle then goes through that loop and build, which leaves the tail out one side and half a knot here. This end is then looped over itself to create a loop like that and then over the toggle and feed the tail through that, that end. And then when that's pulled tight, just position it nicely in the middle of your toggle. When that's pulled tight, that will get tighter as the string pulls. That knot will go nowhere. If you're using it on a very fine string, you can maybe go over again and just loop it one more time, just over the top as you did before, and that'll just give you that extra bit. Not completely necessary, but on a smaller, finer string, it can help in case it would slip. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that all made sense. If anybody has any questions in relation to my harps, uh, please feel free to get in touch. Contact details are available on the websites.